Today I'm going to be walking you through basic video editing in Premiere Pro by walking you through a project that I recently finished. It's 33 seconds long. It's a super simple video that I just shot while chilling on the boat this weekend. Someone else had a GoPro and he was shooting footage too. And so that kind of inspired me to be like, you know what, this footage that I shot really isn't that great, but I'll show you guys how you can turn any sort of footage into a story with the proper steps within editing. I'm Amanda Horvath and I'm all about helping business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. Just to prove that point, this shot right here is on an iPhone 10 with a $30 microphone. So if you're looking to use video in your strategy this year and get amazing tips like this, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. So now that you know what we're going to do, who I am, let me roll this video and then let's dive on into the editing software. Hey, time to catch the fish. So here we are in the project and I'm going to explain what the step-by-step -step was for all of this. So the very, very first step was I had the other person that was shooting on a GoPro upload their footage to a Google Drive and then I just clicked download all um, and that took a little bit of time to zip and download those files. I also airdropped my iPhone footage to my computer and dropped it in here and organized it according to my typical file structure. And then step two was to find music. So I went to artlist.com and just found tons of different music that I liked. So the my approach to this was I started by going to genres and at first I did and by the way, there's a link to Artlist.io in the description below. So I went to genre and I went to country and that's because on the boat we were listening to country music. And so I thought maybe that could be a good starting place for uh, my music. So I clicked on country and then I always click on no vocals just because it can be a little bit conflicting with your video. And I also added an uplifting mood. And so I kind of went through these and listened to hear what I like. And the whole point of this video was to create a video that's only 33 seconds long because two people had their birthdays this weekend and they both turned 33. So we wanted to have a very short video to be able to kind of share. And by the way, we did not plan any of this prior to filming. It was just kind of an afterthought. So as I'm going through, I'm not listening to the whole song. I'm listening to like kind of parts of it to see if I have 33 seconds that could be interesting. But for now, I just went through and I downloaded about 11 songs. So at first I did country and then I took, got rid of country, went to genre and did electronic and pop and browsed several of these to find the other ones. So altogether downloaded 11 songs. So then when I imported them into here, the third step was to actually choose 33 seconds of music that I liked. And so I chose three different ones. Um, I went through here and listened to all 11 tracks and saw if there, what 33 seconds I could take out. And I ended up choosing three different ones. So here was the first one I chose. I'm going to show you guys these and kind of tell you my thought process behind the music itself. So this kind of was that more country vibe that I was going for. And it was a little bit slow. It could work, but it also kind of started feeling repetitive. And so I decided, eh, this is not that interesting. Like there's not that much happening, especially in a 33 second video. Like you kind of want it to have a lot of changes within that time because you want to have a story. So this was just kind of like more repetitive. And so I ended up not going with that one. And then let's listen to this one. 
So this was more the electronic pop vibe, which I actually really like it. But it also was a little bit repetitive. So you can see like it's not building towards anything. Um, it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. Um, and then you can see in the waveform here, it gets a little bit quieter. So that was an option, but then I found this one, which is the one that we ended up with. And I like it because it has lots of different changes throughout the whole 33 seconds. And so it can feel like we're building towards something, there's a shift, and the story feels like a little bit longer, even though it's still only 33 seconds. So here's that song. So right there it changes. We have like another section. And then there it changes again. And then changes again there. So you can see there's like several different changes throughout this song. So I was like, okay, that's perfect. So I took that song and I don't usually create a music sequence. I just did this for ease of explaining this to you guys, but you can do that too if you want. So I take that song and I threw it into my rough cut. So at the time, only this would have been on the timeline and none of this would have been here. So then what I did was I, I was like, okay, I have my music. I know the direction that I'm going. Now let me go through and watch every single clip that I shot. So this is step four. I believe we're on step four. Um, every single clip that I shot, I created a selects folder or sorry, select sequence right here. And if you don't know how to do any of the things that I'm saying, then definitely go check out the video on how to make a vlog on your phone where I do a full 30 minute step by step for how to edit in Premiere. It's a great starting place, including how to get the phone, the footage off your phone and into your timeline. So if this is more of the editing workflow and the mindset behind how I went about the edit. Okay, so for the selects, clicked on these and went through and chose every single possible good clip from every single clip that we shot. And you can see we didn't shoot that much footage. Um, I was very much focused on just relaxing on the boat. And this was once again, an afterthought. And then, but it was super convenient that we had two cameras, right? We had an iPhone and a GoPro. And that makes it so much easier because then any, something that maybe I missed, he got. And so the more people you have, the easier it's going to be to edit. So once, so I'll show you what these selects look like. So it's just any possible good looking thing and any good looking shot. And I'm trying to get the camera to be as steady as possible and only take the good stuff down into the timeline. So you can kind of see it starts, it's a little bit laggy because I'm recording my screen. <laughs> So there's like several shots that are kind of repeating themselves. Okay, let me bring this down. If your computer's lagging, you can bring this down and it lowers the quality and makes it a little bit easier for playback. So I'm just taking several possibilities. So you kind of get the idea. All right, since it's logging, we're not gonna go watch many of them, but so you, you get the idea there. I chose several and if, when I, what's great about doing this is your edit kind of already starts to come together for you um, and you have all your options very easily laid out so you can use your up and down arrows to very quickly like flip through your clips and see what options you have. So once I've done that, the next step is to organize the, all the random clips into an actual story. So the way that I did that was first off, I grabbed this and I, you can see how you can drag it and there's like blue areas that appear. So I took that and I put it right here and that puts my sequences on top of each other. So at the time, say I only have the music and now I need somehow, I need to introduce this story. So when you are deciding how to tell a story, you want to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the beginning and end can be the hardest point when you're editing. And so anytime you're shooting, you want to shoot something that will help start the story. Um, so in this case, I didn't even think about shooting until I was already on the boat. But luckily, Jimmy, who was shooting the GoPro footage, he had a clip where he just said, like his very first clip was this. 
unmute this. Hey, time to catch the fish. So he said, all right, hey, time to catch some fish. So I was like, okay, that's perfect. So I, I dragged that down to the start of the clip. So you can just take this, oops, unlock the track so we can get the audio. Um, so you just drag this down. And then from this sequence, you can always just drag and drop into uh, this other sequence down here, which is the nice part about layering them like that. So then I went through, I said, okay, we're going fishing, now what? And you can kind of see, I'll walk you through my thought process here. So it was really just like thinking through the storyline. So, okay, we're going fishing and now I want a montage of the boats going out. So just showing the people who's going, showing the boat and that we're going out. And also this doesn't have to necessarily be sequential. Some of these shots might have been us actually coming home. And so some of the selects might be over here and some way back over here, but it still works because from an audience perspective, you don't know that. Um, so that's how I came up with this beginning section. And then right when the music changed, I changed to the middle of the story, which is fishing. So you can see we're at nine seconds here. So, so far, this is where the story is at. So I'll show it to you. Hey, this drives me crazy. We got it. We got to go with at least one fourth. Hopefully, this plays. <laughs> hey, time to catch the fish. All right, so now we're in the middle of the story. Okay, time to fish. So I show the bait, and then do this. <clears throat> I show the bait, and then I show the fishing line. I show the fish going into the water, the, the pole just kind of sitting there, so we're ready to fish, and then we're still trying to get to our destination, so a little bit more uh, transitional phase, and then we've reached our destination, which is this oil rig, and here we are now fishing. So then now we're actually putting the bait on the hook, dropping it in the water. So you can see how this is building, right? I could have put these things in a different order and it would have told a different story. So mine is very sequential storytelling, which I think is the most, the easiest way to do it and the best way to do it because anytime you're shooting something, if you can just get several clips along the way, then you just have to string those clips together and cut out anything that's boring. So I'll go over that in a second because I did cut out some stuff in here. Um, so now he's catching a fish. We actually get the fish. So this is still the middle of the story, which is the fishing portion, being out on the water. And then I show three fish, which I had to kind of work to do. So here's one fish. This is a second catfish. Oops, sorry, super loud. Um, that's a second catfish. And then here we have another um, type of fish. So anytime you can have three shots to tell a story, that's best because there's a power of threes. And then um, from here, now we are headed back on the boat. So this was actually the first shot that I got on my iPhone, yet we're using it towards the end of the video of like, okay, we're done fishing. Now we're, we're headed back. We're still feeling good. Um, and I'm slowly transitioning to being uh, now it's sunset and bam, we're back at the house. So there's definitely a quick ending on this because it's only 30 seconds, but you kind of get the story structure overall. Now, there is always footage that will be left out of the clips. So when we were going to this oil rig, this little bird landed on us, which was amazing on the boat. And we like saved this little bird, we thought. Um, and we were super impressed and he was like really tired and just resting on us and everything. And it was adorable. Um, but for this 33 second video, it was kind of a confusing part of the story that was really difficult to explain. Um, so I ended up not adding it to the story. So someone else could have added it. No problem. But for whatever reason, I just decided not to. So there, you're always going to be cutting footage that doesn't make the final edit. And so the more you can trim, the better just to make a very streamlined story. Okay, once I've done all of that, then, oh, and actually as I'm going through, I wanna say that I'm timing the clips to the music. So I'm focused on story, but then I'm also like 
okay, I'm telling this part of the story, this part of the story, and what's the pacing of the edit is dictated by the music. So I'm cutting every time that there's a beat in the song, like I, I'm choosing a certain beat, a certain cadence that I'm cutting to. So you can kind of see here, the clips are the same size, right? And, and that's because the beats are happening on a certain um, pace. And occasionally you want to mix up. So like this is a longer clip here uh, because you don't want it to be so repetitive that the audience starts to notice what's happening. So it's like longer clip, longer clip, cut, 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 all the same. And then longer clip again, cut, cut, long clip. So you're kind of like mixing it up as, as much as possible, but also like trying to keep a consistency um, and a good uh, pace. Okay, so the very, very final thing is coloring the footage. So in this video, we had GoPro footage and we had iPhone footage, and those two need to be colored differently. So I always use adjustment layers to color. So uh, my adjustment layer is here, and you can just create that by going right there, clicking adjustment layer, and it creates that. And you can just drag this down into the timeline above whatever footage you want to edit. So I already have one, so I can delete that. And then, so I just put all of the GoPro footage is on this line, and then all the iPhone video is on this line. And so anything that is related to the iPhone, I have one adjustment layer over those, and anything related to the GoPro, I have one adjustment layer there as well. So that means that you're not having to individually go in and edit every single video clip, right? You can just do it all together at once. So then when you click on that, I'm using Lumetri Color to add a little color correction uh, to it. So it just pops a little bit more. Um, once again, I think that that is in the how to vlog video. And if not, pay attention because my DIY video roadmap walks you exactly through all of these steps. It's coming out very, very soon. Can't wait to drop that. So pay attention, join my newsletter if you aren't already for when that is going to drop. All right, so with that, all you gotta do is export. So I just went file, export, and um, I would also go check out the how to make a vlog video to match these, but basically you could just do one of these like Vimeo 1080p, um, YouTube 1080p, whatever works for you, uh, or just match your source and click export. All right, so that's it. That is exactly how you edit. If you like this video, go ahead and click like, drop a comment below letting me know, and be sure to check out one of these other videos that is currently on the screen, and I'll see you in the next one.